Yo, what is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be upgrading the Lenovo Legion 5. We're going to be using these two sticks. It's going to be a total of 24 gigabytes. Hey, this is Tyrell from the future. So at the point of recording the rest, uh, I only had one stick, but now I have two sticks and it's 32 gigabytes. And we're also going to upgrade the storage. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into the video. Once you have un unscrewed all the screws, you want to be starting at the corners. Now be careful not to press down on the laptop so you damage the screen. So I'm going to use a tool like this. It's like a hard tip. And I'm just going to use it to get a little space in the corner. The first bit is always the most difficult. Once you get a little space in the corner, just work your way to the fan side until you hear like a little click. That was the click. Now we have enough space to kind of put it in there. Now what you don't want to be doing is forcing your way to the side to the fan. This is going to be the last bit you open. So. You make some room here, and now we're going to work the front side. Once again, don't press down on the laptop. It's a little tricky sometimes. So now we have the front side open. It'll look a bit like this. So it's open. And now we're gonna go slowly to the ports, to the sides. You really want tools like this. I would not recommend doing this with like a plastic card. It's really tight. So. Now we have the vents. And what you want to do is you first want to open one side. One side of the fence first. You don't really need to do the other one. The last bit is always a little tricky. Try not to break it. nearly off. Remember, patience. Okay, let's try the other side first, see if we get some more room then. 
there we go. So now it should just wiggle a bit, get some space on one side and then just pull it off. There we go. So I applied a little pressure backwards and now we can just take it off like that. Once again, don't use for a force. So the first thing you want to do is when you upgrade your system is you want to unplug the battery. That is this little cable here. Just wiggle it a bit backwards. Maybe pull the cable a little bit. But everything you do, do it carefully. There we go. So now the battery is loose. On this side, we have the uh, M.2 slot. So for the storage upgrade and over here we have the RAM. So let's just start off with the RAM. I usually just try to get my nails under this little box here in the side and then just pull it out like that. It's like stuck with these little clamps and you just have to like whoop it up. There we go. So over here you can see these little clamps as well. If you just push them a little to the side, they'll pop out like just like that. So remove these two. So when installing the RAM, just make sure the sides are good. Put, put it in like this, then just push it down. So same for the second one, put it in, push it down and it'll click into place. Okay, let's go to the memory. So now we have the RAM installed and let's open this side. Unscrew it. This screw I'm going to be using to secure the M.2 storage drive. So over here we have the M.2 storage drive and you can just pick it up and put it in like this. Wiggle it a little bit till it's in place, then push it down and screw it back on. So now we're going to screw it back together. Um, I've used this little screw. It's okay if you secure it back with three screws, or if you got a spare screw, just you know screw it back fully together. Now. Once you have installed all your components, so the RAM and the SSD, um, plug back in the battery and, you know, wiggle it in a little like you wiggled it out. That's what she said. Um, and don't put it on the back plate just yet. Just put it on the side and see if it boots and if everything is all right. So I just put it on its side now and I just checked it out. It's got, it's registering 24 gigabytes of RAM and that should be fine. Let's see how it does. So let's see, let's compare the X8 memory to the X60 memory in games. See what the performance difference is. So now we're gonna just capture some gameplay like this. I am using a second PC with a capture card to record all of this. And the performance you see in the laptop is just unbiased. I'm using the highest settings. Um, I know everybody's not always playing like this. Everybody always has their own settings, but we're just gonna do it like this. Um, I'm using the discrete graphics card, so hybrid mode is off. And um, 
using the latest uh, latest uh, graphic driver update, and we'll just cut some heads off here. Wow, it's a speedboat now. No, get out of the mast, Lukey. Don't don't climb the mast. Ooh. Oh la la. He's already dead. Call him down. Steady. Let's tire our friends. We're done. Let's get back to the ship. No. Oh. Oh. Yep. Yep, he's dead. <laughs> he's dead, all right. Oh, there's another one there. Can we assassinate him? Nope. Just have to do it the old fashioned chop the head off way. I guess that's not how physics work. This game actually runs so, so much better when you upgrade the RAM. I was getting on low, a good like 50-ish, hello? 50-ish FPS, 60-ish FPS. So the main thing with this upgrade is, is that the lows are significantly better. So you don't really get that much FPS drops anymore. And this game actually is doing way better. I think I've gained approximately like 15 to 20 FPS, which is insane. It was barely playable before and it's just totally perfect now. We're playing Ultra 1080p. I only turn motion blur and lens shit kind of effects off. Just Ultra settings without any doohickeys. Ooh, was that close? Maybe. But the game is just so, so much better playable now. So much better. Whoa! That was close. I, I, I kind of want to hit a chopper with this thing. So close. But to take away this game, it's actually garbage. It's really laggy and stuttery and bad performance wise, but it's actually really playable on this system, especially after the upgrade. No, I'm not gonna compare 20 games together. I just did Warzone, so you get a general impression on what it does. It's, it's, it's more noticeable in uh, CPU intensive games than in GPU intensive games. So games like Red Dead, Cyberpunk, Cyberjunk, um, generally don't benefit that much from the upgrade. Hello. Where are you guys? I'm here to make friends. No, the smoke doesn't dodge bullets. Whew. Oh, you're shit out of luck, bro. You are shit out of luck. You are so dumb. You are 
trust me, you're done. <laughs> Who's shooting me? <laughs> Whoa, I got one to shoot a chopper out of the sky. That shock wave should have killed him. This game is so unrealistic. Oh, hello there. Seems like you had a little falling accident at work. Let's just go play some cyberpunk. Um, I'm gonna try ray tracing on in a second. This is without ray tracing. Ultra settings, DLSS set to quality, and once again, ultra settings, everything to the max. Now, I do notice some slightly better peak performance but this game was already running really well on this system and we could argue 50 fps stereo is that well well i think most of you know how heavy this game actually is so all right let's try some ray tracing let's let's just put it on psycho you're crazy Ooh, bananas That is actually, that isn't surprising, but the frames are surprising. Hello. My goodness. You are one sexy. Mmm. Nice buns. You ain't quick enough. That's a nice knife there. You are so dead. Mm. nice so that was it for the video guys thank you so much for watching leave the like if you liked it if it was helpful and subscribe to the channel and let me know do you think the upgrade is worth it and also be sure to check out the links down in the description and also don't forget to like did i mention subscribing thanks peace